a couple of other foreign policy matters. What should the force, the U.S. force in Afghanistan, look like after next year? I think the president's uh, on track here. Um, we've done by 2014, the end of 2014, as much as we can with our troops fighting on the ground. So we've raised up a large Afghan army and an Afghan national police force. Let's continue to give them assistance. Let's continue to advise them. Let's keep our counterterrorism people in place because it's Al Qaeda that we're really after. Remember, we didn't. The Taliban wasn't even on our on our list of enemies in the first few days after 9/11. It's only when they refused to give up Al Qaeda, and so it's going to be up to the Afghan people and the Afghan forces in order to deal with any resurgent Al Taliban coming in. We can help them with intelligence. We can help them with with weapons training, whatever they need. But the burden of defending their country and keeping it from falling again to the Taliban will rest squarely on the shoulders of the Afghans. What about zero option? Do you leave any troops there? I don't. I've heard this rumor about our zero option. I don't know if there's any merit to it. You have to stay there. We have to have advisors. We have to watch where the money's going. We have to be able to conduct counterterrorism activities. So I wouldn't support a zero option. But there's always a tendency in, in Washington on these issues to say 2,000, 4,000, 10,000. That's not the right way to go about it. As a military planner, you determine what it is that we have to do. How many advisors do we need? What kind of military assistance group do we need? And then you determine what those numbers are. I don't know what those numbers are. The president has laid out some areas where we want to continue helping Afghanistan after 2014. And now the military will have to put numbers to those missions. As you know, there's a renewed debate with the film Zero Dark Thirty about interrogation techniques of terror prisoners. Um, and this film, of course, based on the successful hunt for bin Laden. And the debate sort of harkens back to me to an appearance that former Vice President uh, Cheney made on this program. Uh, he told Tim Russert at the time about some of the things that would become necessary. Let me show that. We also have to work the sort of the, the dark side, if you will. We're going to spend time in the shadows and in the intelligence world. That's the world these folks operate in. And uh, so it's going to be vital for us to, uh, to use any means at our disposable, at a disposal, basically, to, uh, to achieve our objective. It is a mean, nasty, dangerous, uh, dirty business out there, and we have to operate in that arena. To the extent that enhanced interrogation techniques played some role in tracking down the major lead, the courier, which led to bin Laden, and I choose my words carefully, do the ends justify the means? We have determined that enhanced interrogation techniques, such as waterboarding, are torture. We're not going to do it anymore. The military didn't do it in the first place. And since 2003, it hasn't been done at all. I really can't answer the question as to whether or not the movie's correct or what others have said are correct. But we can't be a nation that is lawless. We cannot be a nation that simply ignores our obligations to ourselves, our obligations to our Constitution, our obligations to our own moral standing in the world. And so be tough. If on occasion you have to do something, be prepared to answer for what you're doing. But as the president has said, and before him, President Bush was, was also in this vote, we do not torture people. But the ends justify the means? If we you get not, Bin Laden in the we end? We do not torture people. It is against American policy. I want to end with this. You uh, can always debate what, you know, torture is. what torture is. Yeah. I know what torture is. 